Let us rejoice and be glad, and give glory to God. For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today on our Easter journey, we also celebrate one of our saints. Today is the feast day of Saint Anselm, an Archbishop of Canterbury in the 11th century, who is remembered the whole church over for his writings, his philosophy, his looking into the mystery of God and trying to find ways of explaining that mystery so that others could understand. We'll hear more about St Anselm later on, but one of his most important teachings was that it is faith that comes first, faith that leads to understanding. And in this Easter season, we're thinking of that gift of faith given by the resurrection of Jesus and the sending of the Holy Spirit. We'll hear how that faith is put into action in the lives of the first followers of Jesus. And we'll hear Jesus himself talking again to Nicodemus about believing in him as one sent by God. As we prepare then to celebrate Mass today, let's first call to mind our sins and faults and failings and ask for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who led the bishop, St Anselm, to seek out and teach the depths of your wisdom, grant, we pray, that our faith in you may so aid our understanding, that what we believe by your command may give delight to our hearts. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of believers was united, heart and soul. No one claimed for his own use anything that he had, as everything they owned was held in common. The Apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus with great power, and they were all given great respect. None of their members was ever in want, as all those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money from them to present it to the apostles, it was then distributed to any members who might be in need. There was a Levite of Cypriot origin called Joseph, whom the apostles surnamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He owned a piece of land and he sold it and brought the money and presented it to the apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is King, with majesty enrobed. The Lord is King, with majesty enrobed. The Lord has robed himself with might. He has girded himself with power. The Lord is King, with majesty enrobed. The world you made firm, not to be moved. Your throne has stood firm from of old. From all eternity, O Lord, you are. The Lord is King, with majesty and robe. Truly your decrees are to be trusted. Holiness is fitting to your house, O Lord, until the end of time. The Lord is King, with majesty and robe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
young. You, O Christ, are the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. You have loved us and have washed away our sins with your blood. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Do not be surprised when I say, You must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. That is how it is with all who are born of the Spirit. How can that be possible? asked Nicodemus. You, a teacher in Israel, and you do not know these things, replied Jesus. I tell you most solemnly, we speak only about what we know, and witness only to what we have seen, and yet you people reject our evidence. If you do not believe me when I speak about things in this world, how are you going to believe me when I speak to you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And the Son of Man must be lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus talks there to Nicodemus about faith, faith in the things that he talks about. If you don't believe me when I talk about the things of this world, how are you going to believe me when I talk about the things of heaven? Last Sunday, we were thinking about faith as we heard the story of St Thomas and his doubts and how the Lord Jesus helped him to believe. Faith is a challenge and how we find faith is something that each of us in our own journey of Christian life must face. I believe that faith is not an emotion. It is an exercise of will. It is something that we tell ourselves to do. We say, yes, I may not have the evidence of this. I may not be able to see, but I will still believe. Saint Anselm, our saint today, saw this as one of the central mysteries of being a Christian. What comes first, understanding or faith? Many in the world would say, first we have to try and understand, understand the gospel, understand the mysteries of the incarnation, understand the resurrection, understand God, and then we can believe. St Anselm said it's the opposite way around. First of all, we have to trust, we have to believe. And it's in that trust, in that faith, that we will then come to an understanding of all these mysteries, which in many ways are beyond our understanding. When we believe, that's when faith becomes active. As we heard in the first reading, I love that reading, a very simple snapshot of the very first Christian community, the first parish, if you like. A group of people, united heart and soul, and united in practical things as well. If they had land or property, actually selling this so that it could be a benefit to the other members of the community who were poorer. And we heard the example of someone we'll be hearing a lot of in the Acts of the Apostles, St Barnabas, selling a field and bringing the money to the Apostles so that it could help others. Why would you do such a thing? Because you believe. In our world today, we see many examples of people whose faith leads them to generosity. It leads them to acts of sacrifice, even to acts of heroism. And we're not just talking about the religious sphere here, but that's our concern, to make sure that our faith, our trust, can lead us to an understanding of the mysteries of our faith that can then lead to action. Let me just end with some words written by St Anselm himself almost a thousand years ago when he was Archbishop of Canterbury in a book he wrote called The Proslogion. You, God, are supreme and inaccessible light, a whole and blessed truth. How far you are from me, who am so close to you. How distant you are from my sight, while I am present to your sight. You are wholly present everywhere, and I do not see you. In you I move, and in you I have my being, and I cannot come near you. You are within me and around me, 
and I do not experience you with my senses. I pray, O God, that I may know you and love you, so that I may rejoice in you. And if I cannot do so fully in this life, may I progress every day until all comes to fullness. Let the knowledge of you grow in me here in this life, and there in heaven let it be complete. Let your love grow in me here and reach fullness there, so that here my joy may be great in hope, and there be complete in reality. Let us think of our prayers at Mass today. And first, let's pray for that gift of faith, that even in trying times, we may each of us declare our faith in the constant presence of our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this feast of St Anselm, let us pray for all Christian teachers, for all leaders, for all who seek to explain the mysteries of our faith, and by their own faith, come to deeper understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment, let's think of our own private intentions at Mass this morning. Most loving Father, who are so far beyond our understanding, yet set, sent your Son into the world to speak your word to us. Grant that we may hear him, that we may love him, that we may have faith in him, so that we may understand your divine mysteries more and more. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us, and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, 
every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anselm, Saint Vincent, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring us your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia. We are when Meru is deep water, Alleluia. 
Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.